I'm going to talk about the Library Information Science Experience and the, the title proper of our presentation is the Attendance Register. Now ladies and gentlemen, this is the consistent and the persistent continuity in our experience in the Flexible Project. Um, I will come to, back to this and this Attendance Register for both staff and students now, do, don't get me wrong, we don't fill it in on a regular basis as staff members, but the structures, they want your attendance on a certain number of days for certain times of hours and so many periods per module, so we know we, our attendance is regulated. But around this attendance register, we need to negotiate time. So our um, theme story for today is negotiating. Time and how we do it in this thing. So this is just to give you an idea how we will talk around this, the background to our project, and the people in the story. I will not present your faces, you'll see. And our lessons, but we also had very nice aha moments. I'll share that with you. And then we will present our case study, presented by a male, although we are a largely female profession. And then we will tell you where from, where to from here. So our background is, number one, we're the only department in the Western Cape offering the LIS education um, on an undergrad level. We do offer a full range of um, pro, uh, qualifications from certificates, diplomas, and degrees. And this is to accommodate a continued professional education for people coming back to improve the qualifications uh, from students coming fresh from school to start uh, from fresh with an undergraduate into postgraduate. So the whole range from a certificate, for example, in school uh, librarianship to your degree, your postgraduate diploma, your master's and your PhD. We are very fortunate to be linked to a profession. So we offer professional training and this profession uh, is accredited, recognized by SAKWA and so are our qualifications. And this is a huge achievement this year for LIHASA, our professional body. This profession, on the other hand, is largely womanized and undervalued by society. We've all seen that in February of this year alone, two public libraries were burned down as part of protest, uh, in-service protest. So as a very small department of four staff members, largely female, with one gentleman, uh, we have to offer this full range of qualification or training plus continued professional education. So we can be labeled as a small uh, embattled department in the Faculty of Arts. Now the embattled part, I can explain to you. Um, we are dependent on the other departments in the Faculty of Arts to offer this training. So we use the other faculties, not use is an ugly word, but we cannot do it without them because our basket, baskets besides our professional uh, majors come from the other subjects. And some of our modules uh, or our offerings are stricter because of the closing of part-time modules. And that is why we're back in one aspect. Um, to continue, we within the only professional site we put up our hands to be part of this. So as going like strengths and weaknesses in our background, so I hope you bear with me. And we offer in this project our four-year undergraduate training. Uh, because the postgraduate students are all already working and we wanted to bring it to our broader, uh, a broader cohort, which is undergraduate studies. These students have to do two professional majors from year one to year four. And then they have to fill their basket with six other BA facilitating subjects of which one can become a major. And our students are very uh, into psychology and we've just heard that psychology itself will not be offered on a part-time basis from 2016 anymore. So the major and the basket is getting smaller. We try to get them to open up, open up our basket and they start reducing it again. The majority of our students are working in the public and the academic library sector, so those are the two stakeholders that we have to negotiate with in terms of getting their students to be able to come and study. And they have to attend on a full-time basis. 
they are forced to take on the registration student of status of full-time students in order to be able to come and attend during the day. So the public librarians specifically have to only get 80 hours for study and 80 hours um, to come and write assessments. So they make a clear distinction between attendance for lectures and uh, what where they can come to write assessments. An assessment is just exam, not test. No, no preparation for test. These two pictures you normally would put people in, I have decided to put in two little things to represent our themed story. On the left hand side, the more hours in a teaching day, you see we need to stretch our hours because we have learned to work around the university timetable and the students all along come along and you need to sign their attendance register and they need to do it as soon as possible because I need to go back. I need to get back in every second comes. What we've learned from this is that systems need to work in synergy. This is the university systems. When we went on to Ikamba, the very first problem that we encountered was that if students were registered late, the systems would not pick them up. Students would be missed out. So the registration, late registration, <coughs> all of that had an impact. Um, the systems of how staff understand a student's registration status was a problem. So for us, the lesson that we've learned was our teething problems from year one, the students who registered late because university allowed them in order to get the full quota missed out because they were not on the ICAMBA system. Also, the teething problems that we had with ICAMBA um, that the students could not do certain things or could not access it from home, the initial tearing problems were alerted. We were aware of that because of the research that we've done after the first year. We asked the students about the experiences of Ikamba, what they would like to see improved and the different features and all of those things that they told us, I will share with you now as our aha moments. We also learned that in, to embrace flexibility is actually not less work, but more work. It's labor intensive, you need to make that extra time. Because now if you're flexible, your WhatsApp, whatever you use to communicate with your students is keeping you busy longer than your normal teaching time. We work around the university timetable because in our department, we work on the Saturday mornings, we work uh, extra uh, periods because our students cannot always do all their modules in a particular fashion. And if they, because of the 80 hours, they can, for example, not do their two professional majors in one year that they should do, otherwise they won't promote. So they will do information science this year, library science next year. Which means that they will in effect be doing second and third year, third and fourth, first and second and we all know that if you do subjects on different levels in a particular year, you will experience a timetable clash. So working around the timetable means I am at repeating at the moment a class for two to three students that I've done with the others so that they don't miss out. Because we're student-centered, we work on Saturdays, and my colleagues know alternative Saturdays, it's masters this week, postgraduates the next, and so we go on in order to accommodate our students, so we're working around the university timetable. We've also learned that we cannot take student literacies for granted. You cannot assume that all of them, first of all, have access to technology, you can't assume that they're digitally literate, so we needed to enhance uh, our student literacies, and with that, Came, um, curriculum shifts. For this year, we have moved our library science one to one to the first semester, which is normally technically a second semester module, and because it is called Introduction to Information Literacy, which includes uh, digital literacy. And then the first semester module was moved to the second year. And yet, this year, we've discovered that faculty had to do their work to inform the students about the change of things and they did not. So therefore, systems 
need to work in synergy. So even our things that we've learned is you need to do things well if you want to have the student at the center of all of this. Very important when we started working with ICAMBA and we started introducing it with our very first module, we soon realized that technology can be an enabler but also a disabler. It forced us to rethink our, the way we used to do our things. So this e-pedagogy took of course, all of us to rethink our personal teaching strategy. But we've also learned that in the process to understand and to be able to utilize this new tool, we all needed to go for training. So staff development needs to be continuous and need likewise for your student who don't assume anything. When we asked the students to be part of the research, and because when they were the guinea pigs at the beginning with us, they were just too grateful to be doing the questionnaire and the interviews. And this year, or last year, no, this is the third year, last year they were, when it came back, they said, wow, it worked. You asked us, and it worked. We can now download. It Canva is on the UWC website. It's almost like Google. The lecturers must just Google more. So we learn from our students. It's a two-way street. So there were aha moments. We also managed to get faculty at the university, and we thank them for that, because we negotiated with them to broaden the basket, please. Allow our students to do what they would. We know they are provisos as long as there are no timetable clashes, and as long as you meet the necessary admission requirements. So the basket has been broadened, so that's an aha achievement because we negotiated with the, uh, our various structures and our systems. And the biggest thing for me was the part-timers are no longer Cinderella's or peripherals. Because they always felt that lecturers give their last little energy to them. They don't make that special effort. But now with the Kamba, they've included. They give everything that the full-time student is getting. They're getting it remotely. They're not uh, disadvantaged when they cannot come to class. And they feel they included. So they're not longer there, they're in the center. And this is the story of Jacques uh, Manuels. Um, as I said, we are largely female, so we were so grateful to get a gentleman to tell us his story. And please note how he's playing and how he's stretching what he has in his hand. It's the foreign technology that we're using oh, yeah. <laughs> from London. Yeah. If we can get it going. Yes, yes. It was going. This it was morning. going. Yeah. Just give it a minute. I'm sure. Shark manuals. I work in the library at UBC. I used to work for one of the vendors uh, at the university. It was a dead end job, no, no opportunities for promotion, none whatsoever. So I actually spoke to one of one of the <coughs> one of the staff members in the library, and he offered me a position in the evening. And here I am after five years working at the circulation desk. When I started out studying, it wasn't that difficult. Um, my classes was all in the evening with part-time being phased out. That is, that, is, that is very hard. I'm one of the lucky few because I work on campus, so I can attend during the day. There's a lot of students off campus that needs to attend, so they missing out on work, meaning they have to work back their hours. I need to be at home after work to help out support where I can. And still to do assignments after a day's work, look after a baby, yeah. and that man is a handful. <laughs> and I have I have to do it physically, yeah. and stuff. The motivation I have is to, to, to give my son a better life than the one I had. Um, I was given this opportunity to start here, and I think I've taken my, my opportunity. This is a stepping stone to something bigger. And hopefully I will get my degree in the next three years. You were laughing when you said it is tiring, mm -hmm. physically tiring, mentally tiring. Mm -hmm. And uh, just remember that we all are meant to be 
physically tired and you and um, sorry you, you, you didn't hear that when I said he said that he's tired physically <coughs> mentally tired um, embattled so where do we go from here our degree is four years and the project is his third year he said, he said he hopes to complete his degree in the next three years because he cannot do all his subjects in one go. So, of course, if we want to really be serious in putting up the center, we cannot otherwise but to say we are going as a department to continue our research with this cohort of students. But for ourselves, we can only see an enhanced use of the e-tools. We haven't used them all and technology keeps on emerging. So surely, yes, we will go on the training courses and staff development. And for the university, we would like to ask, please give us more flexibility in the usage of our staff time. Don't be so rigid. And then I cannot end off without saying thank you to Professor Shirley Walters and the DLL team for the initiative in standing up and getting this uh, research off the ground. And then to Sakwa for the wonderful, generous uh, financial support that I've, I've also benefited, benefited from. And then, of course, I've heard we must pronounce you now as SEAT. What we have been without SEAT training us and holding our hands as we were uploading and getting used with Ikamba. And of course, what will we be without our students and the various workplaces that we will be negotiating with? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.